This Faith Thing, episode 183. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus and welcome to Resurrection Sunday, the Sunday where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Friends, I'm sure that you've noticed for the past couple of months that we have not been releasing episodes on Sundays and that is because we don't want our listeners to stay home on Sunday and use our podcast shows as an excuse to get in the word. Please find a Bible believing church in your area. I'm sure there are many around. Please find a Bible believing church to attend on a Sunday basis because it helps you out. Don't think about other people. Don't think about the pastors or the ministers of that church. Think about yourself, your family, your generation to come. Because when you get yourself into a Bible believing church, a Bible teaching church, you will find that you will grow spiritually, physically, emotionally, psychologically, all around you will grow because that is the purpose of the church. But because today, Today is Resurrection Sunday. I just want to take a few minutes of your time today to spread the love of Resurrection Sunday. And my prayer for everyone listening to the sound of my voice is that the resurrection power that is found in the blood of Jesus Christ will wash away all uncleanliness, all filth, pain, sorrow, depression, stagnation, financial burdens, sicknesses, out of your life, whatever that does not represent Christ will be washed out of your life today. The power that is found in the cross is what will operate in your life from now on. Today is the day where Jesus rose from the dead and his tomb was empty. The grave could not contain him. Let's turn to the book of Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10. Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10. It says, now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has risen as he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Friends, Jesus was crucified. We've already been studying for this whole Passion Week, this whole Holy Week, all of the teachings and the workings that Jesus did before he died and we saw that yesterday he was crucified on the cross for you and me he went to that cross for both of us and he now has risen on what we know as resurrection Sunday friends or what we know as Easter but when you look throughout the Bible you don't see the actual word for Easter it's the word that we have given the celebration of Jesus rising from the dead Jesus told them in Matthew 20 verses 17 through 19 the events that he will suffer so it was already spoken about he has already prepared them before these events took place it says and Jesus was going up to Jerusalem he took the 12 disciples aside and on the way he said to them see we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified and he will be raised on the third day he has already prepared them he has already told us when you study the Bible you will see that Jesus dying on the cross for all of us friends has already been spoken about when you go to the book of Acts 3 verse 15 you can read it there it says and you killed the author of life you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead whom God raised from the dead who did God raise from the dead friends to this, we are witnesses. 
We are witnesses because his grave is empty. There are no remnants of Jesus in the grave. Even when you go back to the book of Genesis 3, the first book of the Bible, Genesis 3 verse 15, we already see it there. The word has already told us that this is what's going to happen. This account that's taking place in Genesis 3 is going between God and Satan and the serpent because of what they did for the fall of men. It says here, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Friends, we've already discussed what that verse means, but we can already see that all of these things, they all fit together. That's why don't believe people that said that Jesus is not real. It's real. He's real. Jesus is real. The Bible is real, friends. It's as real as anything. It's realer than everything, if that's even a word. It's making more sense than anything in this world because it never, ever contradicts itself. The Bible can never contradict what God truly means. There are no two verses in the Bible that contradict themselves. The Bible has already told us all over of him being crucified for humanity and then him rising on the third day. The Bible has already recorded it. The Bible records that when Jesus died, the earth shook. There was an earthquake because the earth could not contain his power, friends. This morning, we know that Jesus is alive and well. We know you have to believe in your heart that he's alive and well. He is in your life. He is in all of our lives. He is in our homes, in our schools, in our churches. As long as we invite him in, you cannot expect that Jesus will come into a place where he's not welcomed. You need to welcome him into your life. That is the first place, your sanctuary, which is your body. You need to welcome him into your sanctuary so that he may dwell in in you and when Jesus dwells in you the same way that he rose on the third day friends is the same way that everything that does not represent Christ that may be dwelling inside of you those things have to flee you see sickness cannot be found in Jesus debt cannot be found in Jesus unhappiness cannot be found in Jesus pain cannot be found in Jesus stagnancy cannot be found in Jesus so there's no way there is no physical way, there is no humanly way that if Jesus is dwelling in you, in your heart, that those things can be found, friends. It's not possible. That is the reason why you need to love Jesus for yourself. You loving Jesus has nothing to do with anybody else, no family member. It has to do with you. Salvation is an individual race. It is an individual race. As much as I love my family members, I love my husband, I love my parents, I love my siblings, I love my cousins, I love all of my family, I love all of you that are listening, my salvation, my walk, my race, my journey with Christ Jesus is my journey with Christ Jesus because I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior because I know boldly that he died for me he went to the cross for me because every single day I commit sin I'm sure that before I even started recording this episode I have committed something some type of sin but because of the blood of Jesus because of his blood and because the power of the cross because he rose for me I am confident that Father God will still accept me. You see, in order to see his father, that's why the Bible tells you that if you want to see my father in heaven, no one gets to him unless they come through me. You have to accept Jesus for yourself, friends. You have to accept him for yourself. God is not a lie. God is not a dummy. Neither is his son, Jesus. You cannot be blaspheming them left and right. You cannot say that they don't exist. And then when problems arise, you begin to call in their names. It doesn't work like that. If you accept him into your life, if you accept him into your family, if he dwells in your home, friends, trust me, there will be changes that you will not be able, you won't be able to explain them. They will not even make any sense to you. That's how God works. Things will begin to fall into place that, You'll be looking like, how? How did this happen? 
It's only when you allow Jesus into your homes, into your lives, in your businesses, in your marriages, in your finances, in your career, in every aspect of your life. If anything may be dead in any area of your life, the moment that you allow him to come into your life, friends, those things will rise and they will have new life. They will have new life. That's why he told the disciples when they were sharing the last supper that in this blood is the new covenant. And this blood, this, this blood, this, this wine that you're taking to represent my blood, that is where you will find the new covenant. The moment that you can accept him into your life, friends, everything changes. There's no scripture in the Bible that speaks contrary to what actually happened. No scripture in the Bible. No one can say that they've ever seen the remnants of Jesus. It's not possible because he's not dead. <laughs> he's not dead. He's alive and he's alive and well, friends. He's alive and well. The book of Psalm 16, it perfectly and poetically speaks of what happens to Jesus. Psalm 16. But let's just look at verses 9 through 11. It says, therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Who is at the right hand of God, friends? Who is at his right hand? He is seated on the throne at the right hand of Father God. This passage is speaking about our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Friends, I want you to go ahead and begin to praise him and to thank him for what he did for you. You may not really fully understand what he did for you, but the moment that you begin to praise him and the moment that you begin to sing praises and glorify his name on high, you will begin to understand exactly what he did for you. The fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you're able to use your faculties, the fact that you're able to use your muscles to open up your eyelids, the fact that you can use the muscle around your mouth to say good morning, the fact that you can move about in your home, the fact that you were able to shower yourself and dress yourself, the fact that you were able to drive to church this morning, the fact that you were able to sit down by yourself, they didn't have to will you in friends, the fact that you are able to listen to the word of God and it should penetrate into your body, the fact that you have the ability to process what is being said to you, all of those things are just a snippet of what he has done for you and he does this on a daily basis, he does this on a daily basis. Friends, my prayer for each and every one of you that is listening to the sound of my voice is that the power in the blood of Jesus, the power of Resurrection Sunday will forever dwell in you in the name of Jesus. It will never depart from you. It will never depart from your families in the mighty name of Jesus. And that by the grace of God, by his heavenly grace, if the trumpet shall sound today, we will all make it to heaven. Friends, I hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed this series. I have thoroughly enjoyed speaking about my lover, my love, the love of my soul, the lover of my soul for this entire week. I pray that these messages have blessed you. Go in peace, friends, and I will speak with you on the next one. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adele Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.